All right, welcome everyone. Today, if we look at our course outline, which we always follow, rain or shine, pandemic or no, we are at the end of September, and today, by 11.59 tonight, you are required to have your proving ground turned in with all the rubric requirements. We're going to go through all of them. In class today, we're going to do a little present critique, presentation critique on it. It will take us about an hour or so to, to get it fully uploaded with all the requirements. Then we're going to get introduced to our next assignment, which you'll be doing a nine square frame storyboard for. It's going to be a transformation GIF animation. And from there, we work towards our midterm with our animation project and then group presentations. So the other thing we're going to do in class today is solidify the topics for everyone's group presentation. So every group has a unique topic that they all know how to research on their own. For digital honors students, you are choosing your mentorship presentation topic and you are working to turn in assignments one and two by 11.59 today. If, if there's any part of that is missing, make sure you get something in there so that you can move on to your turnaround sheet and then eventually your 3D model for assignment three. Your turnaround sheet would be exercise two for you. So let's close this and let's remember that we can always go to links off the homepage to be reminded of the external site resources. And our YouTube page is one of those. Our YouTube homepage, you want to view it. It's in LC Arts Lab. It's public. You want to view it by playlists and that will show you each assignment and we're the afternoon class, we're the freeware class. So our proving ground playlist, this is what we've done so far. Five videos, the last one very short, about how to submit our proof of a non-destructive overlay layer. And they kind of cut off my titles there. So I'll review that with you. And we, of course, have to find our files. So if we're nice and organized, we can skip to where we post the proving ground. Are you okay, Michael? That happens with the wheels. We can skip right to it by going to Assignments off of the home page and then scrolling down right to where we post that assignment. So Proving Ground number one, post it here. So what I have posted so far as my example is right here. This is the one of the requirements of the rubric where we show our creature in a landscape and we angle our creature's anatomy to match that landscape, which we did with Puppet Warp and scaling and putting it a certain number of layers back. And then we use non-destructive overlay layers on both the creature and the background in order to match the angle and quality of the light. So. I've tried to do that with these two examples. So both of these are required, a non-destructive overlay layer showing at normal, and then those non-destructive overlay layers, you're required to have at least one uh, set to overlay and affecting it in the way you want. So this was your finished piece, but this shows me how you adjusted the lighting with dodging and burning and with texture overlays. And that is actually this one, this middle rubric of the three. So we've accomplished that. So to remind you about that, let's open up the project. I have my folder and I'm going to open up my PSD, but instead of double clicking on it, I have to open up Photoshop, not Photoshop, Photo P. And then drag and drop my PSD in. And remember, you can create an account, a free account in PhotoP and use some of their limited cloud storage. But I always require you to save your files in two places, both on your computers and then on a USB drive. And that came in handy this morning because someone's files on these computers got moved to the trash. So it was always nice to be able to find them. That's why we also never empty the trash on these computers. 
and I don't even ever want you to move anything to the trash. If you need to clean it up, just move it to the downloads folder. It's also why we name our files with our name and some description. But you won't lose your progress as long as you're saving it in two places. All right, so we've got our creature here. We've got our creaturescape. We had texture fills. We just used it for all kinds of things. But to remind you, I marked these texture overlay layers with gray. And if you set them in the blending mode to normal, you'll see the, the dodging and burning I did on the creature to match its lighting. And if you set it to normal on the, my other overlay layer, you'll see how I adjusted it in the background, right? And then I would just save that file export as a JPEG with a different name. So you don't, I just add overlay to the name. So you don't overwrite your other images. And then you can set them back to overlay mode. All right. So once we have this image and we've posted it, it's important to go back to the image and open image, image size. And this is for the next rubric criteria. This is the understanding your data part of it. So in the assignment, this first one is making sense of the data. Did we accurately identify the resolution in pixels per inch and the physical format in terms of print size, and we're going to use inches, while identifying which of the two main types of digital art resolution your creaturescape is sized for. This is a raster image, so pixel resolution matters for what we can use it for. And the two main types that it talks about, one is for print and one is for screen. So let's go through that. These are things you just need to, need to know to be able to apply. So, if I look at image, image size in photo P, this is what it shows me. It shows me its pixel dimensions. But that doesn't relate to inches for physical format until I click on this drop down and change pixels to inches. When I do that, I'm actually going to write it down, make note of it. Sometimes students make a screen grab that my image, when, f when finished and cropped, Notice there's no extra working space out here. Is 15.23 inches wide. You always put width first. By 14.8 inches tall. Right? At what resolution? At a pixel per inch of 300. And then I ask myself. These are the actual pixels I have. Is that bigger than 8 by 10 inches at 300 pixels per inch? And what's the answer? Yes, it is. Yes, 15 by 14 is bigger than 8 by 10. And as long as it's at 8 by 10 or bigger at 300 pixels per inch, it is high enough quality resolution to use for print formatting, right? Which means you can do a print campaign with it, and you could also do a screen campaign with it. So what I'm going to do is to, to meet the needs of the rubric and the assignment is now underneath my post, I'm going to write that. And this is understanding your data. There's nothing in this image that tells me what it can be used for or how many pixels it is. So I'm going to write. So this is a rubric requirement. This is actually rubric requirement number one. But you just can't do it until you do the do the image to begin with. Okay, so I have to put the physical dimensions. 15.23 inches and you use double apostrophes for inches by 14.8 double apostrophe for inches and you can say wide and tall if that's helpful to you
and then I use the at sign, or you can say at 300, and then what's the abbreviation for pixels per inch? PPI, yes. Even though Pixabay calls it DPI, it then says next to it, pixels per inch. So DPI is something else that's a mistake in, not Pixabay, in Photopea. So pixels per inch, or you can abbreviate it PPI. Now, I've done the physical dimensions. I've done the pixel resolution. I have not yet done the resolution type. So which type of digital art resolution does this size and pixel resolution allow me to use it for? It is good for standard print resolution. So if you don't note that, you can't get a full score on that rubric. Now, what if my image wasn't bigger than 8 by 10 at 300? Absolutely. Very good. So my image is a set number of pixels. It is this number of pixels. And if I change that at all by putting in something else and having resample check and saying OK, the computer will hurt my image. That's just all there is to it. If I make it bigger than it really is, I say grow pixels, then the computer has to make up pixels around each pixel I did, and it will just look soft and blurry. If I reduce the number of pixels I have, it will still look sharp on the screen, but it will actually get rid of pixels. And that gives me fewer options, right? So in order to check the parameters of my resolution and what it can be used for without hurting my image, I have to uncheck resample. By unchecking resample, it means it will always be the same number of pixels. Even though it won't show me that. So that way, if this number was less than 8 by 10, then I can't say it's print resolution. Because if it's at 300 pixels per inch, but smaller than 8 by 10, I could print it as a postcard, I could print it as a postage stamp, but I couldn't do a real print campaign with it. So then we, we go to the lesser standard, which is 72 pixels per inch. So those are the two you need to know. 72 pixels per inch, 300 pixels per inch. 72 pixels, pixels per inch is standard minimum screen resolution. 300 is standard minimum print resolution. So if mine was less than 8 by 10 and I change it to 72, unchecking resample, I'm probably going to get a width of like 30 inches, which sounds like a lot, but 30 inches at 72 pixels per inch is not 8 inches at 300. Right? And then you would write that and you would say in your assignment that it was good for print resolution. Nope, sorry, that it was good for screen resolution because it's at 72, not print resolution. So this is really just making sure you understand your data and what it's good for, what its use is for. So now we have met two requirements of the rubric. We've met number one, making a sense of the data, and number two, making sure our creature's anatomy and light direction matches the setting. And you're allowed to edit the setting as well to help that come across. So why don't I put that in? So rubric requirement number two, even though we're posting that first, because I didn't write this rubric, I just decide how we demonstrate it, is matching the creature's angle of anatomy and light quality and direction to the setting. And I'm going to put in parentheses by showing or by posting our overlay layers our dodge burn overlay layers. <laughs> Nothing more exciting than watching videos of people type. By posting dodge burn overlay layers set 
to normal. And that is how you.